What's going on everybody, it's Stas here, welcome back to another video. So in today's video, just like always, we're going to be breaking down the overall markets, taking a look at the S&P 500, the Dow Jones, and the NASDAQ. We're also going to be doing a trading update, talking about any trades I made today, as well as talking about some stocks and ETFs that I'm personally watching and looking to trade heading into the month of October in 2019. And I know you guys saw in the title, this market has been extremely difficult to trade. So I'm going to be talking about some of my thoughts regarding that, what's been making it difficult. And yeah, if you enjoy this video, guys, feel free to go down below, hit that like button. If you find value in this video and you want to see further content from me, hit that subscribe button as well and hit that notification bell and join our Discord group chat and our Facebook group. All of those are linked down below. So with that further ado, let's get right into it. Starting off here with the SPX, the S&P 500, the 500 largest publicly traded U.S. companies. We ended up closing the day up $14.95, up 0.5%, half a percent on the dot today. If you go to the one day, one minute, we can see we actually hit a peak at about 29.84 ish. We got a double top there and we closed the day on a little downswing. So at the peak of the day, the S&P was actually up around $23, $24 and at that point, it was up around 0.8%, roughly that area. So we were up a pretty solid amount in the middle of the trading day today. And if we go back to that 184-hour chart, let me pull up my drawing tool so we can draw some levels of support and some levels of resistance. As of right now, we are trading between the all-time high, which is at around 3027, and this level here at around 2950, putting us in a zone of around... 80 points right now. We're trending above the moving averages as well. Both, actually not both, just one of the moving averages being this yellow line here, which is the 180 SMA, and that's putting us again on top of that support at around 2950, which if we look on this five-day, five-minute, we actually tested yesterday and popped above it. But overall here, guys, what I'm seeing is despite us holding that 50 SMA, or not the 50 SMA, the 29.50 level of support here, we're still technically downtrending here. And the close, the way the market closed today on this little downswing, that's leading me to believe that we may be potentially selling off here to dump. And how can you really detect that? Well, if you're looking at these futures in the morning, the market futures, especially the S&P and a lot of the large caps, what are they doing, right? Are they trending down? Are they down 0.2, 0.3%? If they are, you know, that could indicate to you, to me, to us in general doing technical analysis that the S&P is gapping down, doing something like this, and we may be pushing down to test that 2950 level again and maybe even break it to push a lower low, which would be the continuation of the downtrend. So right now, now, sure, the markets did very well today, right? They were green, but the bears kind of took over here in the middle of the day, heading into the market close, which again is leading me to a conclusion that we are still in this downtrend based on this five day, five minute. And if we zoom out a bit to the 20 day, one hour, you guys can see exactly what I'm talking about on a broader basis. This is actually kind of a mini head and shoulders here on the 20 day, one hour. You guys can see the left shoulder, the head, and now we're forming the right shoulder, especially if we do dump tomorrow. Again, if those futures are down in the morning, you know, that could indicate that we are dumping. But right now, you know, you guys can see we did peak above the 50 SMA, which is a pretty good sign for the bulls. But again, we are seeing that very strong resistance at that trend line as of right now. So for tomorrow, guys, I think it's important to watch the 20 day and the five day, five minute chart to see if we confirm that dump. If we do dump, stocks can go back to downtrending, right? Because today, again, we had that green day. A lot of stocks popped up. Let's say the markets do this, do this 
this dump, you know, that could indicate a red day tomorrow. But on the flip side, you probably guessed it, guys. If we break out of the top here, that would be putting us above these moving averages as well as the resistance of this trend. That could be a breakout, right? At that point, we may be going up to test 3000 bucks, which is a strong resistance, 2990 3000 bucks, right around that level. And maybe even that peak that we just talked about, which is around 3020, 3027 to be exact, which is that all time high. So those are some things I'm watching on the SPX. But overall, again, we're trading between 2950 and that all time high. If we go to the Dow Jones Industrial Average, today we ended up closing up $96, almost 100 points today in the green, but not as good as the S&P in terms of a percentage gain. We were only up 0.36% on the Dow Jones in terms of today's performance. And if we just quickly uh, remove this drawing, because that is a little bit confusing, remove this one as well, you guys can see that right now, we're trending between 26.6 and around 27.3, which is that all-time high roughly for the Dow Jones Industrial Average. If we go to the one-day, one-minute, you guys can see the bulls were killing it this morning. We saw a bit of a resistance here at around $27,000. We got a double top, and the bears took over heading into the close. And this is honestly looking like a head-and-shoulder pattern on the intraday chart as well, kind of, right? You got the left head and then you got the right shoulder here so this is very good in my opinion for the bears the way the market's closed here if we zoom out a bit to the five day five minute you guys can see overall very similar to the s p right the resistance we saw today was at a lower high and technically what i'm seeing here is the downtrend still being intact and tomorrow if we dump if the futures are red we're looking to push down here we may test that 26 7 level of support and if we break that that's going going to be the continuation of the downtrend because the Dow will be hitting a lower low at that point. If we zoom out a bit, 20 day, one hour, you can see we're still trending below that trend line again, the one that I just mentioned, and we're still in this downtrend. No breakouts today, guys. We almost got the breakout, but again, we got hit, which is looking pretty bearish right now. So for tomorrow, just keep an eye, right? If we dump below these moving averages, if the futures are red, we may be pushing for that low that lower low, right? But if we break out, if we do something like this, you know, we may be pushing to test that all-time high and maybe even make an all-time high. So as of now, guys, my overall, uh, you know, uh, head and shoulder theory on the four-hour chart, it's still intact, right? Because we didn't get any big breakouts, but we didn't really get any dumps, which is why it's still intact, right? If we get that big dump and ultimately break 26.6, like I mentioned in a couple of videos ago, that's going to be very, very confirming, in my opinion, for, you know, the uh, the, the start. Really, the, the head and shoulder, the right shoulder already did start, but that it's really in, in, in a bigger process of forming if we do break that, right? If that does make any sense. So that's kind of what I'm looking at in terms of the Dow here, the NQ. I think I erased it from my watch list by accident. But the NASDAQ today, guys, if we zoom in over here, um, it definitely did not close up $9, that's for sure. Let me just pull up my Yahoo Finance app very quickly, guys. The NASDAQ ended up closing the day up 60 points today, up 0.75%. And like I mentioned a lot on this channel, when we have a big red day, typically the NASDAQ is the reddest of them all in terms of the three major indexes that I talk about on this channel. And when we have a green day, the NASDAQ's the greenest of them all, hence why it was up, not always, but hence why it was up 0.75% today, beating the two others being the S&P and the Dow. But overall, guys, no crazy breakouts today on the NQ. We're still trending above 7,700 and below 7,830. So we're in a channel of around 130 points right now. And overall, if we look at the 20-day, one-hour, guys, the downtrend is still intact. We're trending below moving averages, not the 50 SMA, not the EMA, but we're trending under the overall resistance here being that yellow line being that 180 SMA, right? And if we zoom a bit in, 
to the one day, one minute. This is probably after hours. Yes, this is after hours that we are climbing up here. But the way the markets peaked in the middle of the day, you know, the bears took over here. But then something must have happened here. Some piece of news or some catalyst must have came out that I'm missing now, to be completely honest with you guys, that ended up shooting up the NQ. And let me see the, yeah, the other indexes are also up as well. So actually, what what I said is kind of erasing now, not really erasing because the futures definitely can change now, but it does seem like a catalyst must have came out that is moving these markets after hours. But nonetheless, the futures can definitely change heading into tomorrow. So just still keep an eye on whether or not we do dump in these markets, which would continue the downtrend, like I said. But let's say these green markets continue again. We might be breaking out tomorrow. We just have to keep an eye on what the futures are doing um, in the morning. So back to the NQ again, we're breaking out right now, but the way we closed, it was on this downswing. And nonetheless, on the 184 hour, again, we're still trending below that 50 SMA and on the 20 day one hour, still trending below that 180 SMA, despite this little rally that we are seeing, um, you know, happening right now in terms of the aftermarket hours um, on these futures. So overall, guys, that's kind of what I'm watching in these markets. Nothing crazy. I'd love to know what are your opinions down below in the comment section. And typically now, guys, we would be doing a trading update, but to be completely honest with you all, I actually didn't place any trades today. I kind of wanted to be a bit cautious with what the market was going to do because this morning, I do believe the futures were up. I didn't want to get caught in this bull trap, not saying it is a bull trap. It might be a bull trap, right? But I just didn't want to go long on anything because the overall markets are still in a downtrend based on all the technicals that we just looked at. So I didn't want to get caught in a long swing position. And honestly, I didn't really see much movement in my market ETF watch list to play a day trade. So I was in an awkward spot today, honestly. And me, you guys know this by now, I don't force trades. And when I don't see any opportunities based on my watch list, what I'm watching, I don't really take any trades, right? I'd rather just sit back. I'd rather just sit on my cash and wait till an opportunity presents itself. So right now, like I mentioned a couple of minutes ago, I'm waiting to see if these markets potentially sell off. Maybe they get rejected by those levels that we talked about being those moving average resistances on those multiple smaller time frames. And if that does end up happening, guys, I'm looking to bank a big gain on either SQQQ, which goes up whenever the NASDAQ is going down in case the NASDAQ does get rejected by that moving average that we're talking about, right? Being this 50 SMA, you know, if that ends up happening, the NASDAQ dumps 2-3% in the next couple of days, that's a massive gain on SQQQ that I could potentially get, right? TVIX is another one that I was looking to play today. Didn't end up playing it because the markets didn't dump, right? But this could be setting up for a huge move tomorrow if the markets do dump, right? And let's say the markets break out, that's going to be huge as well because we can trade trade TQQQ, which goes up whenever the NASDAQ is going up. So there's a lot of options here that I'm seeing based on the way these markets are closing and are setting up, which is going to lead me to the next point of this video that I want to make, being the difficulty that a lot of people in our community, and me personally, I'm not even going to lie to you guys, the difficulty that I've been having and a lot of people have been having involving trading in this market, right? This market is a very difficult market to trade. Back in 2017, guys, I wasn't even on YouTube at that point, but but back in that time, you know, this was the time period that it was not easy to trade, right? Because trading is not easy. I'm not going to sugarcoat it to you. I'm not going to BS you guys. But this was a time period where the markets were steady uptrending, right? You could find swings. You can get in and out of certain stocks, right? The markets were uptrending. Not much craziness involving like the trade war, right? There wasn't anything with, you know, uh, what's it called? The inverted yield curve, which shocked a lot 
lot of people, right? The, the, the Fed cutting interest rates, which is kind of good in the short term, but overall in the long term, that is not a good sign for the economy. Nothing was really happening that was too major at this point. But then once everything started happening involving the trade war, this is when this big dump happened, right? The trade tensions with new, you know, tariffs coming in, these things with Saudi Arabia involving oil, the economy slowing down, right? Trump on Twitter, you know, venting his anger about the Fed, you know, all of these things have been going on. And I feel like the market's been manipulated as well, which a lot of you guys could agree with. So the market's just being pulled and tugged in multiple different directions when, you know, there's all of these catalysts that say it should be going down. Others think there's catalysts that it should be going up. I feel like the market is just everywhere at this point. You know, one week we get a tweet from Trump saying the trade war is going great. They're coming close to a deal. The markets fly up, right? The next week we get a we get another tweet. I hate China. He didn't really say that, but you guys know what I mean. You know, the the, the you know, uh, we're slapping tariffs here. We're slapping tariffs there. The the Fed, you know, we we me and uh, pal, we don't agree. He should be cutting the rates even more. You know, there's all of these things just talking the market, making it very difficult to honestly swing trade because me personally guys my bread and butter is swing trading. I'll be completely honest with you guys. So it's been difficult for me to ride a swing trade out because all of these swing trades, like you guys have been commenting and talking about in the community, have been Trumpified, right? I know a lot of you guys have been using that term. And it's been my, my swing trades, a lot of them have been Trumpified as well. They're going well, and then all of a sudden, boom, Trump drops a bomb either on Twitter, trade war, whatever it may be, right? And then that swing trade gets crushed. So that's just, it's just been difficult, right? I know a lot of you guys can relate. Let me know down below in the comments, what are your thoughts on that? You know, it's it's kind of like a learning lesson, right? It's a good lesson and it pushes you to be very tactical when you are placing a trade, right? Back in this time period, back in the 2017 time, like I just talked about when the markets were a little bit better, well, a lot better, honestly, you know, you could pretty much throw a dart at any of the big companies uptrending and and you would make money on a swing trade, right? That's kind of how it was, making it a bit easier than it is now. Now it's a bit harder, right? You have to look a bit deeper. You have to understand which stocks aren't really affected by certain things and then put your money there, which is kind of what I've been trying to do. Not successfully fully, but I have had some success. But the overall gist is it's been difficult the way things have been, the market being pulled in multiple different directions. So let me know down below in the comments. Again, what are your thoughts on that? I'd love to know what you guys have to think. Again, I love talking to you guys. We are a community, so do not be shy to leave a comment. So let's get into a couple of stocks very quickly that I'm personally watching. Um, one being Apple, right? AAPL. This one did very well today. This one had a big weight on the NASDAQ today um, due to its performance. You guys can see we were up $5.15 at the close, up 2.2 three percent and overall this one's breaking out now there's no question about it right we can see this was a downtrend from 226 to about 217. We had a strong support at 217, three separate bottoms. And if we zoom out a bit to the 184 hour, guys, this level was an old resistance. So the fact that we had three separate bottoms on top of it as a new support is a very good sign, right? So we broke out of the moving averages and the overall downtrend there. And now it seems like we're testing this top at 226. And if we do break that, guys, I think thing this one's going to be gunning for all-time highs which if we zoom out a bit to the one year one day you guys can see that is at 233 dollars so tomorrow you know it, this is really just depending on how the market does right if the markets dump this could be dumping as well and we may get a retest <clears throat> excuse me, on top of this old resistance as a new support, maybe at around 220, 221, right? If we do get that, maybe we can buy in on the dip here and then ride it to 226. That's possible, right? Let's say these markets explode tomorrow. Again, who knows, guys, what's going to happen, right? Let's say these markets explode and we start to test 226. This can also be a breakout if we break 226. It could fill the gap to 230, right? That could definitely happen because, again, 230, 
30 is that all-time high. So I'm watching that for sure. Boeing is another one I'm watching here, guys. It does seems uh, it seems like it did retest 378 today. If we go to the one day, one minute, you guys can see we pulled down to exactly 378, almost almost exactly at about 377.90, and we popped right off that level. So overall, guys, I would like to see a breakout on the five day, five minute above the 180 SMA. If we zoom out to the 20 day, one hour, that would be putting us at a higher low from the previous. That would be moving us above these moving averages as well on the hourly chart, which on the 184 hour at that point, guys, we'd be looking to fill up to mid uh, the mid 390s. That would be ideal, maybe even the low 390s. That's where I'm looking to potentially capitalize on Boeing, probably from around 383 would be a target. So let me set on alert here again up to that 390 level. So is at or above, let's say um, 383. I'm going to click create. So boom, there, there we go. So if this ends up riding up, that's going to alert me. Another one that I'm watching is CMG guys, Chipotle Mexican Grill. This one is looking to hold 835 as a support, which was a resistance. So that's a good sign. We actually closed at about 840 up 2.6% today. So keep an eye on this one. This one seems to do well, even when the markets are going down. Overall, the trend's been up and the market recently has been rocky. You you guys know that. So this one could be from 835 up to resistance levels at about 856. You guys see it's at 840 now. So maybe this one pulls down, retests. Maybe it just continues the run up tomorrow. You guys have to see what the technicals are telling you and then plan accordingly. But I think we could easily fill up to 856 here either tomorrow, maybe even the next day, right? Because you can see in one day it ran 21 bucks. So it could definitely fill up in one or two days up to that resistance level no problem. So let's take a look at gold very quickly before I do end off this video, guys. Gold is completing that head and shoulder pattern here that we talked about. I think we talked about it, but if we didn't, we're talking about it now. I was probably just thinking that we did. I don't really remember, to be honest, but I definitely did my analysis on it, and it seems like this one is making that head and shoulder, and it completed it, honestly, at this point, right? We got the left shoulder, head, right shoulder is moving us down now. We broke below 1495, which was critical level of support. Now it seems like we may be going down to 14. 50, which could open up a sweet opportunity for JNUG, which goes up whenever GDX is going up, which is a gold ETF that tracks gold. So despite these looking terrible right now in terms of technicals, guys, if these markets do see a downturn, if these markets dump, gold is going to go up because people flood to it, people view it as a safe haven, and then GDX ultimately is going to go up, which is going to move JNUG up. So don't be scared that JNUG's dumping because although it's lost half of its value nearly, that means there's a lot of margin of profit open for the next rally that gold does go on. So that's it for this video, guys. I don't want to hold you too long. If you enjoyed it, if you found value in this video, feel free to go down below and hit that like button. Consider subscribing if you do want to see further content from me. And if you want to be a part of the Strive Smart community, there's a free Discord link down below with over 800 people in it, as well as a free Facebook group down below with around 250 people in it. So join those platforms, join those communities. Again, everything's linked down below. Thank you all for your time. If you did stay till the end, you are awesome. I really do appreciate you. And that's it. I hope you guys have a great night. Hope you guys did well today and do well tomorrow. I'll catch you in the next video. Peace out.